Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Christmas City Express. We are broadcasting live tonight from the Lake Superior Railroad Museum here at the historic Union Depot, and I am so excited to have you all here with us tonight. I wish we could be together in person this year, but unfortunately we can't. So I think this is the next best thing to being together and celebrating one of my favorite Christmas traditions, the Christmas City Express. My name is Cheryl Scassi, and I have had the honor of being the reader for the Christmas City Express here since 2013. And before that, I read the Polar Express. So I've been reading here at the museum during the holiday season for probably about 15 years. And one of my greatest joys is seeing your faces year after year at this event. Um, and I can't wait to see you next year. Tonight's show is a first for the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. We are broadcasting live here tonight, and we have some great surprises for you tonight. What you can expect to see tonight, special guests, a story performance, a discussion, and of course, the trains. So how is this all going to work tonight? Well, the first thing, I hope that most of you, if you haven't already, have signed up for the chat function. We have Railroad Elf over here, Corey, who is going to be monitoring the chat. And if you have questions or comments, or if you have something that maybe you want to ask me or one of our special guests, be sure that you're ready because there may be an opportunity to do that. Now, the other really cool thing you can do tonight is you can post pictures of you at home enjoying the Christmas City Express by putting it on hashtag CCX Duluth. And your picture just might show up here on the webcast tonight. Oh, and we'd love to see you. I hope you all are in your pajamas, maybe have your hot cocoa ready. I heard some of you might even have some popcorn. And we've got hundreds of people watching from really all around the world. I heard from Railroad Elf that we have people even in the United Kingdom watching us tonight. So we're really excited to have you all here with us tonight. So be sure that you post those pictures tonight and hashtag them to CCX Duluth and we'd love to see how you all are celebrating with us tonight. So you all know the answer to this and it's really sad, it makes me sad too. But of course, the reason that we aren't gathering together in person this year is because of the pandemic. And I wish it wasn't here, but we're making do with what we have and what we are able to do to be sure that we all can gather together. And uh, you can bring some of these holiday traditions right to your home. So I have to say that the pandemic has really affected nonprofits like the Lake Superior Railroad Museum and the North Shore Scenic Railroad. And anything you can do, if it's in your means to make a donation or to buy some of our great merchandise of the Christmas City Express, that is something that we encourage you to do. We have our Christmas City Express book, which you can get sent to you, uh, our teddy bears, which have a red bow around their neck. And for those of you who know our story, you know how important that red bow is in the story. Now we also have ornaments that you can hang on your Christmas tree. And maybe if you've been at our event before, you have one of those on your Christmas tree already. And um, a couple other things that we have for sale, and you'll see on your screen that you can actually purchase those and I think maybe Railroad Elf might put some links on the chat so that it's easy for you to find but we also have some really cool things like gift certificates. You can give the gift of trains to the train lover in your life. You can also purchase a museum membership and for those of you that don't know about the museum memberships now these are really cool. You can get free admission to the museum anytime you want to when we're open and you can also get free rides on the train and you get a great magazine that's full of awesome stories about railroading here in our region. And we also have guidebooks. Now these 84 page guidebooks feature beautiful pictures of the collection that's here at the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. And it's a great historical document to kind of get you to know more about what you can see and what you can find here at the museum. So the links are on the page and I think that our friend Railroad Elf, Corey, is going to be posting those links as well. And uh, you can always ask questions in the chat as well about those. 
And I'd be remiss if I did not thank our sponsors, the folks who are making it possible for us to join together on this webcast tonight. So a huge shout out if you want to put your hands together for these folks, WDIO, WIRT TV, Super One Foods, Duluth AV Logistics, and Freestyle Productions. We could not do it without you. So a big round of applause for all of you. You made it possible tonight. So now, where are we broadcasting from? Well, we are here at the Historic Union Depot in the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. And I think we have some B-roll here of some of the trains in the museum and things that you might be able to see when you come and visit us. So the Lake Superior Railroad Museum in, is in the depot. And for over 40 years, it has fulfilled its mission to preserve protect and interpret the history of railroading, especially as it relates to our region. The museum houses a ton of trains, like literally a ton of trains. And one of the coolest parts of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum collection, well, the trains here all relate to the Northland. While many museums across the country, and really there's no such thing as an uncool railroad museum, they're all pretty awesome. While many of them collect historic trains from all over, the trains here all relate to the region that we're broadcasting from. Like the William Crooks, which is located here right behind me tonight. It's one of my favorite trains here at the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. It was built way back in 1861. We also have the giant 227 engine, which is a Mali style engine, which is one of the biggest, baddest, and most powerful engines ever. Now, the museum started as a local project back in 1973, and it has grown into one of the largest and most respected museums in the entire United States. We really cannot wait till we can all gather in person again at this event and here at the museum. and. Um, for a lot of you, you know that the Christmas City Express event isn't just about the story. It isn't just about the special guests, but you also get to ride the train. Raise your hand if you like riding the train. I certainly do. It's one of my favorite parts. Now the trains here at the North Shore Scenic Railroad operate in the spring, in the summer, in the fall, and of course, for the Christmas City Express in the winter. There's about a 30 mile stretch of rail that goes up the North Shore and right along the beautiful Lake Superior. Now on the train, you know that it's narrated. There's concessions. Did you know you can even eat pizza on our trains? Yep, we have a pizza train as well. It's fun for all ages. And the coolest part, all the proceeds from you buying tickets for the Lake Superior Railroad Museum and the North Shore Scenic Railroad support a local nonprofit, um, one that I just, one that I just love. So you can learn more by going to DuluthTrains.com. The Lake Superior Railroad Museum has been operating the North Shore Scenic Railroad since 1996 with the help of an awesome core of volunteers. And I think we have a volunteer who used to be on our train as a conductor watching tonight. So uh, thank you so much. We wanna thank all our volunteers, the folks who are our conductors and our engineers and the folks who interpret and make the museum such a special place that we all have just come to love. So again, if you have any young people in your life or anybody really who loves trains, please consider supporting the museum this year by buying a gift card and giving the gift of trains. You know, the other really cool thing that I think about riding the trains is that you actually get to ride some of the historic trains that are part of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum fleet. Isn't that neat? I just think that's so cool. So now I know you all are very excited to be here with us tonight. I'm so excited to be here tonight. And we do have some special guests. We do have that story performance coming up. And now it is time for me to introduce you to our first guest of the evening. Now, I know you all are very excited to see him. He's one of the most popular people here at the uh, Christmas City Express event. This guy knows if you've been naughty and he knows if you've been nice. So I want you all to put your hands together and give a big wave to the one, the only, Conductor Luke. 
Hi, Conductor Luke. Well, hello, Cheryl. How are you? Oh, you brought me hot chocolate. Well, I sure did. It is the season. Oh, thank you so much, of Conductor course. Luke. Can you say hi to all the boys and girls that are joining us tonight? <laughs> hello out there. Isn't that exciting? We have hundreds of people from all over watching us tonight. Fantastic. And joining us. You know, Conductor Luke, I was thinking about how special the museum has been in my life. And actually, I think we could tell everybody how important the museum has been to our life. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, this is where we got married. It's where we us. got yes. married. Conductor Luke and Cheryl were married. And it's been so exciting to have this be part of our family tradition, uh, to come here and read the story and be with families every year. And it, it really holds a very special place in our heart, doesn't I agree. it? I agree. Yeah. Some wonderful memories, which. Brings an interesting thought to my mind. Uh, memory has been a little bit of a difficult thing for me lately. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's the holidays, and there's some things that I only do, you know, maybe sometimes during the holidays. Oh, sure, and yes. One of those things is uh, drinking hot cocoa. Well, yeah, hot cocoa is definitely one of the best parts about Christmas. Yeah, it is. I, I think because I only have hot cocoa around this time of the year, though, I oftentimes forget how to go about enjoying hot oh, cocoa. Oh, Conductor Luke, you know, I think I know and see where this is going. You have forgotten how to drink your hot cocoa again. I, I, I'll admit it to everyone watching and you. Yes, I have. Well, hot cocoa drinking <sighs> is a tradition of Christmas. So grab your cup. Okay. Everyone, if you're watching from home and you have your cup of hot cocoa, you're going to have to help Conductor Luke do this together. So Conductor Luke, the very first thing you need to do is you need to make sure your hot cocoa is the perfect temperature. How do you do that? Well, I like to blow on it. Just blow on it a little bit to make sure it's cooled down. So let's blow on our hot cocoa. And once you blow on it and you kind of have it to that right temperature, you're going to take a nice sip. Okay, first step is to blow on it. Blow Second, on it. Second step, step is to sip. So sip. let's take okay. a sip. Well, it certainly got it to the right temperature. Yeah, that's perfect. And that last step after that delicious sip of hot cocoa, I want you to let out a nice sigh. You breathe in and you breathe out like this. <sighs> and that is the three steps of drinking hot cocoa. You blow, you sip, you sigh. I'm going to try it again. Okay, are you ready? Blow, sip. <sighs> perfect. Did you do it at home too? I hope so. I love hot cocoa. Thank you so much for bringing this oh, tonight. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. So let's see. So drinking hot cocoa is definitely something that I enjoy around the Christmas season. Um, what's something else that we like to do during the Christmas season? Well, I love Christmas music. Oh, I do too, like Christmas carols. Absolutely. You know, Conductor Luke, I heard that you know how to play the guitar. I do, admittedly, Do yes. you think maybe you could play us a Christmas song on your guitar tonight? I have my guitar right here. I'll get it. Oh, and Dr. Luke, there's a problem though. I don't know how we're gonna decide which song to sing. Well, I've got an idea. Okay. So I might not have a very good memory, but uh -huh. that doesn't mean I don't have good brain power. So okay. what I want everybody out there to do is I would like you all to think about your favorite Christmas carol and okay. just think about it really hard. I'm thinking. And send it to me. I will like pick through up their it. brain power? That's right. You can read their minds? I'm doing my best. Okay. I need everyone's help out there. I want you to send your favorite song through the airwaves, through the camera, to Conductor Luke's brain. Getting a feel already. Are you already. thinking of it? Okay, have you, have you heard from Henry and Leo? Yes. Okay, theirs have been tallied. Okay. There's angels we have heard on high. Oh. It's got a boat in there, but it's not getting the most right now. It's not? Well, what about Myra and Ty? Have you heard from them? Uh, believe so. Yes. Okay. The Dirks and Hero? Are... Yep. Them as well. Dirks. Got your boat. Hero. Here. Got your boat. What about Graham and Greta? I know that they're watching tonight, too. Yes. Check and check. All of the votes are in. It's a close one. Is it? Well, yeah. Oh, jeez. I wonder what it is. Well, I got a lot of, there was a lot of Rudolphs out there. Oh, really? But it was narrowly edged out by another song. I know this one. Jingle bells. If you know the words, you should definitely sing along. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. 
Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. O'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. <laughs> bells on bobtails ring. Making spirits bright, what fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Oh, Conductor Luke, I'm going to give you a round of applause. If you're out there, give him a round of applause. Let's give him a round of applause. That was lovely, Conductor Luke. Thank you so much. Well, we have had some hot cocoa. We've sung a song. What else puts us in the Christmas spirit? What about stories? Christmas stories. You know what? You're right. It's one of the big reasons we're here tonight. You know, there is. A Christmas story that I know means a lot to us. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think you and I are thinking of the same the thing. The same story. All right. So it's time for our presentation of Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack and the Beanstalk? Uh, Conductor Luke, that's not even a Christmas story. Right. Okay. Sorry. The memory is... We had a it's okay. It's one. okay. Try again. We can, we can do it. Okay. What's the story, Conductor Luke? Got it. Yes. Goldilocks and the Three oh, Bears. Goldilocks and the Three Bears, Conductor Luke. That's not the story we're here to tell tonight. Well, you helped me out with the hot chocolate. You might need to help me out here, too. All right, boys and girls. I'm going to need your help on this one. On the count of three, let's all say it together the story we're going to tell tonight. One, two, three. The Christmas City Express. The Christmas City Express, <laughs> written by Cheryl Scassi and Luke Moravec, illustrated by Marissa Sauer and inspired by Marshall Bueller. You're probably wondering how we know this story. Why we know this story is true. Well, we were on that train. That train we're here to tell you about tonight. The Christmas City Express. It was a snowy Christmas Eve when I boarded that train to Duluth. Snowflakes were falling from the sky, tickling my nose and collecting on top of my hat. At my feet was my father's old suitcase. Everything I needed was in there. Enough clothes for the trip, a small platter of chocolate fudge for my grandfather. Conductor Luke, do you like chocolate fudge? Hmm, <laughs> I love chocolate fudge. Who doesn't like chocolate fudge? Raise your hand if you like chocolate. Yeah? Oh, that's great. You know, that night on the train, in my special suitcase that I had, I also had a gift for my grandmother, topped with a beautiful red bow. All aboard! The train whistle blew loud and long, piercing the cold night. I was excited for the journey, eager to arrive and crawl into bed at my grandparents' house. I had sent Santa a note to let him know where I would be this Christmas Eve. I boarded, and the train slowly crept away from the station. The snow swirled and danced outside my window. Looks like the storm is picking up, said the conductor as he stopped to check my ticket. The train traveled deep into the night. Outside the tree branches, heavy with snow and ice, looked like reindeer antlers. Hey Cheryl, I have an idea. Everybody put your hands like this. Cheryl, you too. <laughs> all right, now all the kids, look at the adults. And the adults, look at the kids and wave your fingers. <laughs> we call that a reindeer antler wave. <laughs> you know, Conductor Luke, that makes me think of Santa. And I wonder, what gift is he going to leave for me under the tree at my grandparents' house? I had just closed my eyes when the train wheels began to slow. The train gave a lurch. Then we stopped. I peered out the window. The blizzard was blinding and the night was dark. The light from the passenger car reflected gently against the snow-blanketed hills. We were in the middle of nowhere, far from home and far from our destination. Now don't worry. 
We have enough coal in the tender to keep us warm, but it appears we'll be here all night. But we want to be home for Christmas. We want to be with our families, the passengers cried out. I was worried, maybe even a little scared. I did not want to be late for my grandparents, and I didn't want to be stuck somewhere that Santa couldn't find me. The conductor checked his watch, looked at the unhappy passengers, then turned his face toward the window. What happened next, boys and girls, I'll never forget. The conductor grabbed his overcoat and a lantern, and with a loud harumph, he headed outside. Can you say harumph, Conductor Luke? <laughs> harumph! I pressed my face against the cold window. I could just make out the lantern light as it bobbed and bounced into the distance. Then it disappeared. After a time, the dim light returned. The conductor came into view. He was dragging something big behind him. Well, what is it? Is it a mailbag? I don't think so. Is it somebody's luggage? Nope. Is it a big dog nipping at his heels? <laughs> I don't think so, Conductor Luke. Let's find out. The passenger car was all abuzz when the conductor appeared empty-handed in the doorway. You didn't think a stuck train could cancel Christmas. He smiled and motioned for everyone to join him in the baggage car. I was the first to follow, and inside I saw immediately what the conductor had brought in from the cold. It was a Christmas tree. Snow and ice melted off its boughs. The smell of the needles reminded me of my Christmas tree at home, decorated with dirty socks. Wait. You put dirty socks on your Christmas tree? Of course. Doesn't everybody? Well, if you don't put dirty socks on your Christmas tree, then where do you put dirty socks? In the laundry. Oh. Conductor Luke, I think I have forgotten what goes on a Christmas tree. Well, that's all right. Uh, I can help you with that. Uh, you put ornaments on a Christmas tree, uh, Christmas lights, tinsel, maybe candy canes, a star on the top. Star on the top. Conductor Luke, I remember. That night on the Christmas City Express, I didn't put dirty socks on that tree. I went back to my seat and I took the red bow off the gift for my grandmother and I hurried back to the baggage car. Everyone smiled as I placed the bow on the tree. Suddenly there was a flurry of activity as passengers rushed off to collect the ribbons and bows off the presents they had packed. Soon our tree was covered in red ribbons, big bows and shiny foil. Laughter filled the train. A man with a deep voice started singing carols. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a, a Merry woman shared snowman-shaped cookies, and the conductor Christmas. heated water on the train's Happy boiler and made hot chocolate for everyone. Hot chocolate, Conductor Luke. Should we do it? Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. If you have hot chocolate with you right now, or if you don't, you can pretend, but let's all take a sip of our hot chocolate. Are you ready, Conductor Luke? Oh, I'm ready. Just like we talked about. Blow. Sit and sigh. Good job, everyone. The baggage car was warm. People were smiling and talking, but I was lost in thought. All I could think about was how Santa was flying around the sky looking for me, not knowing how to find me. I was so distracted that I didn't realize a woman had approached me, holding out a pair of knitted mittens. She said to me, I made these for my grandchild, but I saw how you shared, and I'd like you to have them. Merry Christmas. As I tugged on the warm, fuzzy mittens, I realized that Christmas was right here, right on the Christmas City Express. I made a wish. I wish everyone could have a gift on this Christmas night. Suddenly, a big gust of wind shook our train. And then I heard it. It was quiet at first. It sounded like bells. It sounded like jingle bells. 
A loud thump sounded from the roof. Everyone looked up. Prancing footsteps echoed from above. What was that noise? Is that the storm getting worse? I don't think so, Conductor Luke. Is it a train engineer walking along the top of the train? Okay. Well, it was windy, so maybe a tree fell over and fell on top of the train. Do you know what it is? Let's find out. Everyone was talking at once, but they all fell silent when Santa appeared in the doorway. I knew it was you, I whispered. He smiled. Well, I heard your wish. And with that, Santa handed me a gift. It was beautifully wrapped with colorful paper and a fancy ribbon. After each passenger had received a gift from Santa's bag, he turned to leave. Wait, Santa, I called out. I found the bow I had tied to the tree, and I brought it to Santa. It's not much, I said, but you need a gift on Christmas, too. And as I placed the bow in Santa's hand, something magical began to happen. Soft and silent snowflakes started to fall inside the baggage car, collecting at our feet. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Then as quickly as he had come, Santa was gone. I reached down and I picked up a snowflake. It was almost as big as my hand. The snowflake was cold to the touch, but even aboard the warm train, it showed no signs of melting. As the other passengers opened their presents, I went to the window. The snow outside had stopped falling. The moon reflected her light against the silver and white hills. Santa's sleigh was just a small dot in the sky, racing to its next location. Good night, Santa, I whispered. Warily, I made my way back to the passenger car. With great care, I placed my snowflake in my suitcase before sleep closed my heavy eyes. Early the next day, I woke to the sound of the train pulling into the Duluth Depot. I saw my grandmother waving to me from the platform. No one spoke of the events of the night before and the conductor ushered us off the train with a smile and a tip of his hat. Since that day, I have told many people about my night on the Christmas City Express. Most people just shake their heads. I know they doubt it's true, but I don't. Every Christmas Eve, I open my father's old suitcase and hold in my hand a snowflake, cold to the touch and still not melted. The end. Conductor Luke, that was fun. That was fantastic. Oh, I love that story. It's very fun to hear every year. It is, it is. Well, Conductor Luke, I think we should tell everybody who we're sitting next to. I know, I'm too excited. I'm I so can... excited! <laughs> right there. Okay, everyone, it is my pleasure to be interviewing tonight Santa Claus. <laughs> Hi, Santa. Oh, hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm so good. Oh, good to see you. It's so good to see you, Santa. Oh, thank you. Oh. I brought my bells and everything. Oh, we're so glad you're here. Well, tonight, yes. I know that we don't have the children with us. Oh, it's so sad, but I know. that's the way it is. Yep. I know, but we have just hundreds of children watching tonight, and uh, we have some questions oh, for sure. you. But I'm going to encourage you that if you have a question for Santa, to put it on the chat, and we might be able to answer a couple of your questions here tonight live with Santa. So, Santa. Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, I'm so nervous. I've never interviewed Santa before. Santa, mm -hmm. are we on your nice list? Uh, hmm. Let me think. Oh, geez. Let me think about it. Uh, yes, oh, oh, both of you are on the nice list. Oh. But, but I was... what I do have to say is there's plenty of time to do better. Oh. We still have time, but you're on the nice list. So don't worry about that. Excellent. But excellent. always think about doing better. 
Fantastic. Mrs. Claus tells me that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, well, Sam, thank you for that. And I will endeavor to do better. Thank you. I thank you. Speak, yeah. uh, thank for, I think, all of us watching here tonight. Um, my guess is one of the questions that might be coming through uh -huh. will be about uh, your safety this year. How are you planning on traveling oh. and doing your job safely this year? Well, one of the benefits of, of, of my job is the magic that occurs with what I do. You know, the, the flying uh, sleigh, which is magical, and the uh, reindeer, we're all separated. I'm, when I get to a house, everyone's asleep. So I'm able to uh, shrink down and get very small and get my gifts out there and then leave very quickly. So I'm not there very long. And I do wear masks when I'm, when I'm flying and when I'm around and when I'm going around from place to place. Sounds so like you got it covered. That's perfect. I have it all covered. My face too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Santa, that's good. I know that COVID-19 has changed a lot of the things that we're doing this year, but I'm so glad that you're going to be able to get out there and uh, deliver your presents I here am. on Christmas. That's I so am. great. I will be there. Well, speaking of delivering presents, you know, I'm kind of curious, what sorts of things are you hearing from kids this year? What's on the wish list? Oh, you know, people ask me that a lot. And it's, it's, there's a lot of electronics, of course, you know, that's in, it's not new anymore, but it's new to me, even though how old <laughs> I am. Uh, but it's fairly new that, that we do. But, you know, people and the young people are asking for very simple things, too. Things like wooden toys, which is what I know best. I'm a carpenter and I made wooden toys for a long time. So that makes me happy. Dolls, fire trucks, and guess what? Trains. Ah. People like trains. Can you believe that? I, I see a lot of them around here. Yeah. I know. So they like trains. So the traditional toys always ask for stuffed animals, Barbie dolls, uh, other kinds of dolls, uh, uh, Trucks, toys, bicycles. You know, sure, those kinds sure. Of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, could I, this next question is sure. more of a favor. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you give us a really good ho, ho, ho? Oh. <laughs> well, you go first. Should we well, do it? Kind of on the spot. Okay, yeah. you want it together? Yeah, together. Okay, okay. Are you ready? Uh, one, two, three. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, oh. Cool, that's it, pretty good. That's pretty good. So, so, you ready? to start. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, uh, I think ours kind of paled in comparison. I think so this too. is a real thing. Yeah, so. You have a way to go, just like with the uh, your nice list. You have a way to go. <laughs> we'll endeavor to do to, to better, right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's great, Santa. Um, so I've been thinking about what I might leave for you to eat on oh, Christmas. Oh, I like that. Um, maybe some milk and cookies. Uh -huh. Do you have a favorite kind of cookie? Uh, let's see again. Well, let me tell you, this is a secret. My favorite cookie is all of them. <laughs> I like all of them. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, well, Christmas is coming up and Soon enough, it will be behind us. What are your plans for after Christmas? After Christmas, we relax. We have about a month of relaxation in January at the North Pole. We have to clean up and we do uh, quite a bit of repairs on the machinery that helps make the toys and uh, uh, fix up the mail room. You know, we get lots of mail sure. out there. So we have to get things and we had to file things away for each child, you know, from one year to the next. So there's a lot of cleanup there in January, and we really start in our toy development and building in February. Wow. So, but it's that January, I really relax and sit by a fire and I read. Well, you've oh. earned it. You've certainly well, earned thank it. Well, thank you. I, we, we feel we've been doing a good job. So thank you very much. Well, Santa, I'm wondering if any of the boys and girls out there have questions for you. Do you have time to take a couple of well, them? I have a couple. The reindeer are waiting, but okay, we can yeah, go. Yeah, right. yeah, sure. Okay, number one question. How old are you? Oh, oh that's a hard one. <laughs> Let me tell you. Because I, the when, when the elves took me in, I was a human, and the elves took me in, and I have some elf magic. And my years are not the same as human years anymore. So... You know, one second to us may be uh, uh, one week to them. I mean, it's it's very different. I'm thousands. I've, I'm hundreds of years old. 
but I don't even, I've lost count. I think I've lost count and I'm nowhere near your age yeah. as far as how old I am. Yeah. I forget every once in a while. Yeah. Again, one of those things that I need to have Cheryl remind, remind me of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, a, it's something, but I'm very old. It how goes, fast it how go? fast yeah. does how my fast sleigh go? go? Yeah. Oh, that's right. It's a, yes, how fast does my sleigh go? Well, it, uh, that's another thing. Speed, it's, it, it, uh, I don't know. <laughs> to tell you the truth, it goes so fast. I do have to stop and pick up gifts along the way. The elves have other sleigh and other reindeer that we're training to be on the Christmas Eve uh, uh, Christmas Eve run and the elves have those and we have secret storage places in different places around the world So those aren't as fast as my sleigh is but um, it, it since time stops the speed of the sleigh It's got to be at least 240 There's so much that I don't know about this is fantastic. This has been a wonderful interview. It oh, has been I've Did you learn lot. something? Yeah, Absolutely. Oh, wow Good. that I need to be nicer Yep. <laughs> 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 You're pretty funny. <laughs> Are there any other questions, uh, Railroad Elf? Um, I have two more. Um, this one should be fast. For the reindeer, do they want carrots or candy canes? Um, they are carrots, if I carrots. had to choose. Yeah, yeah. But they do like a few licks. Okay. Let me tell you that. And then the last question that multiple kids ask is, what do you want? I, what do you want for Christmas? What do Santa? I want for Christmas? Yeah. Ah, well, I want love. I want to see love out there between children, their grandparents, their parents, their families, whoever's taking care of them. That's what I want back. That sounds like a wonderful thing to wish for. Thank this you. Christmas. I want that. That's what I really want. Well, if you want to, I would love to hear what folks are wanting for Christmas this year. So feel free to put it in the chat. And we might just share that with Santa too, so that he can see what you are asking for this mm -hmm. Christmas. So feel free to write in the chat what it is that you might have on your Christmas list this year and maybe share it with other people and give some folks that are maybe still wondering what they want to ask for, give them a chance to see what others are, are looking for this Christmas season. Mm -hmm. Well, Santa, we appreciate you taking time out of this very busy time of year to be with us tonight. Do you have any other questions or thoughts, I, I, Dr. Luke? I am so content with what we have heard from you tonight. Thank you so much. Oh, Appreciation from me to you. Thank you. I'm very welcome, and I'm glad to be here, and I'll give you a send-off. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you, Santa. And now we are going to hear from some of our sponsors. So we will take a short break and we'll be back with another special guest. Just outside your window seat as you ride on the North Shore Scenic Railroad is Lake Superior, Canal Park, the Lake Walk, and all of Duluth and the beautiful North Shore. Trains depart seven days a week from the depot in downtown Duluth. Choose from several popular excursions, the Duluth Zephyr, two harvest trips, or the fun family music and pizza train. Call the North Shore Scenic Railroad or go to DuluthTrains.com for schedule information and tickets. There's a window seat waiting for you on the North Shore Scenic Railroad. The Salvation Army's annual Red Kettle Drive already is bringing in over $119,000 from the 17 kettles across Duluth. They're still looking to make another $100,000 in donations to reach their goal. Miners Incorporated is looking to donate up to $50,000 in a match challenge for our Red Kettles and for the work that we do here with the Duluth Salvation Army. This is just so gratefully received. WDIO, with you for solutions, with you for change, with you for life. Be part of the solution to create change. Well, thank you again to our sponsors tonight for making it possible for Conductor Luke and I and Santa to be here tonight to tell you the story and to just spend some time this Christmas season together. Well, we have another guest tonight, and um, he's one of my favorite people, uh, Ken Bueller, who is the executive director of the Railroad Museum and the North Shore Scenic Railroad. And you might actually have to tell me <laughs> Ken, what is your actual title? Because you're just kind of like a magic maker to me. So <laughs> I'm executive director of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum and fortunate enough to also be general manager of the North Shore Scenic Railroad. Well, that's great. And specifically, so what do you do? That's your title. What does that entail? It means taking care of the investment that uh, 
hundreds of people have made in the museum over the years as volunteers, as founders, as donors, to make sure that their investments are well maintained and taken care of and preserved. And I think the biggest part of my job is to make sure that all of this magic gets passed on to the next generation better than I found it. Well, that's great. Well, I know over the years you have met many young people who love the museum and love trains. And um, and so we're so grateful that you and your work has made this possible. So um, and speaking of making it possible, you know, I was thinking that for some of our viewers tonight, it might be interesting for them to hear a little bit about how the Christmas City Express story came to be an actual story. So um, the story involves me and Conductor Luke, of course, but it really started with this guy right here and his dad, Marshall Bueller, who, is he watching tonight? Yes, he is. All right. Hey, Marshall, <laughs> it's nice to see you out there. We're glad that you're joining us. One day I want you to come to the event so I can meet you in person. Um, but do you want to tell the story about how the Christmas City Express came to be? It is my honor. Uh, Marshall, don't forget the Christmas check. Um, the uh, story started out as a, a kid story that Marshall used to tell us, and uh, he was a great storyteller. He is a fabulous storyteller. He is the raconteur of our family uh, at all the gatherings. He is the one that always lights and delights the children with the story, and, and he is also the keeper of the family's history, and he is a historian by, by nature. So he would tell this story, the same one that you and Luke uh, wrote down and Marissa Sauer uh, illustrated so well, and uh, Josh Miller helped with publishing. That was a story he told us. Um, but it sometimes got lengthy. My father's a train geek, so he loves detail. And the details would be, oh, one day the story would be about a Prairie 260 steam engine. And the next time it would be a Consolidation 280. And the details got longer and longer and longer. So I tried to write it one year and publish it, and it was way, 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 way too long because I do take after my father. <laughs> but the two of you took that wonderful story about that little girl going to see her grandparents on Christmas Eve and put it into a book form that is a delight for children and is just the right length. But it all started with Marshall's story to us kids. And it's always fantastic to have that source material. That's, yeah. that's where it really started, and that's really great to hear. Um, I know that some people probably have this question out there, and maybe it's a difficult one to pinpoint, but when can people start riding the trains again? Well, it's a different year. As you have said many times this evening, we should be riding the trains right now, but it's yeah. not safe. So what we've decided to do is postpone the start of the season, Luke. Normally we would start at the end of April and run through May on weekends. We're going to shorten it down and start the weekend before Memorial Day. So that first weekend will be the last weekend in April, right before Memorial Day. And then um, it'll be kind of a slow start to the season. But I'm an optimist. And I believe that with all the advances that are taking place and the way this is being handled by our frontline healthcare professionals are doing such a great job. And we're so fortunate to have them and all that they give us. And I think that by July 1st, we're starting to open up everything right. and people will be comfortable again. And I predict that every day towards the end of July is going to be like a Saturday in August. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. And that optimism, I think, is going to go a long way with Santa, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to do better. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, when you're open uh, next year, is there anything new and exciting that folks can anticipate seeing when they come to the museum? Thank you, Cheryl, for that great question. Um, we'll be opening, we hope, uh, on the 11th of January for the museum so people can come and, and see all this. But we've got several new displays that we've added. Um, we've got the lantern display is finished out. We've got uh, some new work on some signaling displays around the museum that'll be active. We also have, and this I'm very excited about, the Rainier Club uh, Round End. It's a lounge sleeper car back in the museum for the first time in five years with a brand new paint job, and it looks spectacular. And we'll have a whole display about that. So yes, there will be a lot of new things to see here at the museum. And maybe we've already heard your answer to this next question, but what is your favorite part of the museum? You know, 
I love this museum. I love my job. I'm a very, very lucky man. But when you look around here, it's, it's really just stuff. It's just iron, old iron and wood. Nothing happens in this museum until somebody tells somebody else their train story. And when that happens, then all of a sudden this means something. And let me give you an example. We have an RPO car, which is a railroad post office. And these were cars that were on the railroad where the mail person was sorting the mail from town to town as the train went along. And it's a wonderful display. It's interactive. You can go in the car and see how it worked. And there's a video that shows you how it was done. I come to my office one day after a weekend, and there's a note on my desk. And it said, uh, to whom, you know, they didn't know who I was. It was just to whom. Uh, I toured your museum with my mother. And she's quite old. And we were in the railway post office car. And she told me a story that she had never told before about how she met my father, who is now deceased. He was a postman on an RPO car, and she, I knew this, was the daughter of a train station master. And they would wave at each other when the train went by. And she always was there to wave at him, and he was always at the door to wave at her. And one day the train stopped, and he gave her a small present, and that led to their marriage. And that is a story our family had never heard until your museum and visiting that train car. That's incredible. <laughs> That's when a museum comes to life. Oh, that is a beautiful story. And I know that many of you out there have your own train stories, stories of your time here at the museum and on the North Shore Scenic Railroad. And we can't wait until next year when we will be able to do this event back again in person and be able to enjoy each other's company again. Um, so hopefully we'll have more train stories in the future to be able to share together. And that's one of the jobs at the North Shore Scenic Railroad is to make and create new train stories uh, for people that have never been on a train, are on their first train ride, or people who have ridden many trains but can remember those great trips of the past, and this gives them an opportunity to share. We're very fortunate. Uh, our volunteers work very hard year round uh, to keep the museum in top condition, to make sure that in the summer the railroad is running and running safely and smoothly. That's all done by volunteers, hundreds of them, that it takes to keep this operation going. And we're very fortunate for each and every one of them. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight, Ken. Um, it's always lovely to see you. And for all of you out there, I think that we need to do this together. <laughs> so on three, I think, Conductor Luke, we need to do a big, loud choo-choo to send us off tonight. I think so, too. So on three, I want you all to say choo-choo. Are you ready? <laughs> One, two, three. Choo-choo! <laughs> Merry Christmas to all of you out there. We hope you have a wonderful season full of joy, health, and happiness. Thank you for joining us tonight. Please visit our website at DuluthTrains.com to learn more about gift certificates and other merchandise that you can buy to support the museum. And with that, from me, Conductor Luke, Ken Bueller, Santa, and everyone here at the Lake Superior Railroad Museum,
Thank <laughs> you.